Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! We have a lengthy question here, and I like lengthy questions because lengthy questions equals more money. Uh, hi, I would like a video on YouTube so I can benefit others. Please keep this as anonymous as possible and avoid mentioning identifiable details as my background is very unique. Been watching your videos for around four years. You are a younger man in your 20s and start watching them when you were 15. Holy cow. Always wanted to go to Wharton. I am an undergrad at Wharton right now. Uh, okay, you're at the top finance school. Interested in pursuing a career in venture capital. I enjoy learning about new technologies and talking to people. Fuck investment banking and long hours with discounted cash flows. <laughs> How is venture capital going to be any different? I have gotten an internship for the summer. Anyway, to get to the point, this is great. Hey, I, I don't want to... <clears throat> let me just recapture the information for myself. You're doing pretty good, dude. I mean, you got an award and that unto itself is an accomplishment. You're a young man. You got an internship. Sounds like you're doing great. Anyway, to get to the point, here's a background on Bob myself. Now... You, uh, all right, you're, you're, uh, you're not from the U.S. You are American, uh, mixed race. Uh, was bullied when you were in the third grade, high IQ, probably 130, 140. How come you're only bullied in the third grade? That's kind of curious to me. Oh, of course, someone's going to take a shot. Now I got to do. Gabby's a professional. He's a professional. There we go. That's how it's done. High production value. You want high production value? Talk to Coach Red Bill. Um, <clears throat> high IQ 130. Probably? What do you mean probably? Did you get a test? Do you have SAT scores that would indicate a similar distribution between 130 and 140? Always loved business as a kid. That's not such a thing. Business is not a, business. Is business. It's like why I like water. I love water. No, I, I just kind of like it. Always found it hard to make friends. Most Found most people stupid and wasting time. Didn't make two friends, one in middle school, one in high school. They were really close to me and we stay in touch to this day. Did a lot of shit together. They pushed me to become a better person. They were very interesting and would read and work on themselves. Teachers in my school were mostly expats who had problems at home and came to teach abroad so they could escape their problems. Oh, did you go to some kind of like uh, magnet school or uh, not Montessori? What do they call that? Some kind of private school. They would in turn lash it on the kids. Uh, dude, that's not just your expat teachers. That's pretty much every teacher out there. I, I cannot even begin. Maybe I'll write a book someday trying to use the limitations of the English language to truly describe how much I hate teachers and just what evil, despicable people they are. They're just so inferior. And it'd be one thing if they were inferior, but I don't think it was, um, I don't think it was just your teachers. I think people in general who go into teaching are scumbags. Uh, was always different and eccentric. Well, yeah, you're, you, you didn't, you are different. You are eccentric. You came from a foreign country. I always wanted to go to Wharton and study my fucking ass off to get here. All right. Now I get to Wharton. Realize I wasn't the best guy out there. In fact, far from it. Yeah, but you're... This is like going to the Olympics of the finance world. And you're like, hey, I'm not the best diver. Oh my God, you know, you're in the best finance school in the country. So if you're not the best there, that's all right. Even if you're solid middle, it's okay. Uh, was able to get along with people more easily as they were more passionate and interesting people at Wharton than at my high school. I got a bit shocked and lost with the change and lost with the change in culture, etc. I would always compare myself to others. Now, now, okay, look, 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 again. I'm trying to think of what this is like. This is a problem everybody runs into college. Um, but kind of on the reverse end is you'll go to your, your rate. This is the case it was in the 90s. And that is you compare yourself to your peers and you forget that your peer group is not representative of the rest of society. Okay, when I went to college back in the 90s, 
it kind of still meant something. Now, any dipshit with a pulse and, and who's breathing, assisted or not, you could be on life support, they'll take you, okay? To go to college today means nothing, absolutely nothing. But back in the 90s, it did mean something because I think only a third of the population had a degree. So you're in the top third. So then a lot was a common experience is you would graduate from college and then you were dumped out into normie world and you're like, what the hell? Why is everyone so dumb? And you're like, oh wait, we went to college and that doesn't necessarily make you smart. Uh, but back then it meant that you were in a slightly higher intelligent group, slightly more accomplished group <clears throat> than the average run of the mill schmo collecting food stamps. Now you are at Wharton. <laughs> <laughs> which is better than Harvard, better than Chicago, better than, I mean, you are at the creme de, you can't get any better, you're in the Olympics, and you're like, dang, I'm a really average pole vaulter compared to all the pole vaulters. Never mind the fact less than one-tenth of one pop, uh, one percent of the population even knows how to pole vault to begin with. It looks like a fun hell sport, though. That just looks like really fun. Um, so, dude, don't let the fact you're average at Wharton you know, this is Top Gun. I'm just average at Top Gun. It's like, yeah, okay, so you're you're one of the best fighter pilots in the world anyway. Okay, maybe you're not number one. Um, but that's fine. That's good. It, it It's a good thing. It's good to have someone be better than you. Uh, it's, and there always is somebody better than you. There always is. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh... And would always compare myself to others. Yeah, so compare yourself to others in a productive manner, right? Compare, like, oh, I'd like to be better. That's always great. I go to the gym, oh, shit. <laughs> I, I got news for you. I am not in, I am not middle uh, when I go to the gym, especially in Vegas. Oh, my God, those guys are ripped. I am definitely in the lower, lower quartile compared to, because there's all bouncers and ripped guys. And, but I still go to the gym, and I like to be like that guy. What's his technique? Oh, he's doing a different kind of lift. I didn't know that. Well, that looks, that looks very difficult. I think I should try that. So don't let it get you down, okay? You're not meant to be number one, okay? You're meant to be the best you can be. And then maybe that happens to be number one, but don't be sad because you're squarely average at Warden, okay? That's <laughs> Oh, damn it. I got second place at the Indianapolis 500. Oh, I suck at driving. Uh, wasn't satisfied with my body, couldn't get any girls, didn't know shit about that because of culture, wasn't the smartest kid, far from it, and it was all very hard. Kept getting rejected from every club, and girls, and every you got rejected from clubs? Roommate, on the other hand, was very successful and seemed to have it all. Became best friends with him and saw the things he was better at that. Dude, okay, I don't, how'd you get into, how'd you get into Wharton with all these typos? Then me, and I figured I could learn from him. This took a year to realize. Summer freshman year, I worked my ass off at the gym and went down from 22% body fat to six. Woo! In five months, watched YouTube videos on style, improved how I dressed a lot, and took Latin ballroom dance class to be able to dance to the girls. Thank you for that, by the way. Somebody else, one of my classes, was giving me guff, saying, what straight guy teaches ballroom dance class? Uh, the guy that wants to get laid. That's who. That's... People didn't recognize me. The fall semester of sophomore year started because of how much I changed physically. Yeah! I was so committed to the gym and figured I would compete in a bodybuilding competition to push myself, so I ended up not hanging out with friends or picking up girls for three months. Couldn't even get a boner because of the low-fat diet. Ended up crashing and burning three days before the competition. Was almost fainting. The coach prevented me from competing. Okay, you gotta eat. I remember when I was in high school, the spit bucket. Wrestle, we're gonna wrestle, we're gonna wrestle. Wrestling was coming up, and to get weight, meaning lower the weight so you could, you would weigh in, and the goal was to get at the lowest weight class possible. The wrestlers would carry spit buckets, and they'd spit into the bucket to lose weight. I'm like, oh, for God's sake. So they emaciate their body. I mean, I'm no profession, you know more about lifting weights, but you know this is a dumb move to starve your body. <clears throat> um, Realized that since I didn't have the competition, I didn't have to care about how much I eat, etc. So I went on a binge eating for two months. Oh, and not not exercising? Previously, I measured every single gram I ate and hadn't like eaten bread in six months or eaten takeout. I was very committed to it and never missed a single day of the gym or the workout. 
dude, did your body go into shock? I'm serious. That's, I mean, what? You can't just do that to your body. I mean, you did. Started trying to get girls because that's something I was never good at. Went on a Tinder and put up some pics and got so many matches. Went out with them and managed to get laid a few times. Had no idea what the fuck I was doing. Well, assuming you still had some of your body left over, it was your body doing the work, which was you doing the work. <clears throat> Women are that simple, man. It's not that hard. It's, it's whether you want to keep them around is another issue. Uh, basically managed to get them because of my good-looking body. I had no relationship experience, so was very vulnerable and would attach emotion. Oh, no, you became a clinger. Oh, you a clinger? Oh, you suffocated them. No. Why didn't you talk to me then? I could have helped you along stages. Would attach emotionally very quickly and oppress, obsess about them and be needy. Girl wanted to stop seeing me after four dates and it really hurt me. Then the semester ended and it was winter break. I decided I wanted to improve my game and learn shit so I can be even better and I did pick up game video course over the summer. Taught me a lot. When I See, this is an instance where pickup artistry can help because there is some truth to game. Uh, taught me a lot. When I came back this semester, I applied it and got many girls. Of course, said to have an abundance of girls so you're not too needy about anyone to have many options. I would still, however, get attached to the girls, and when they would want to end things, it took it personally. Guys, do it. I, I gotta keep you anonymous. Every guy, every loser, every nerd who started off as a nerd wants to have a girl usually because they have nothing else going on in life. Now, you have created a bunch of things outside of girls a ton of life. You're working out your career, which I think is going to be amazing. Uh, but you still got that itch with the girl. And now, I don't know if it's like you are emotionally so much want them or whether it's you're trying to make up for it. All right? But you, it, but you guys have... I don't know how and I don't care how you do it. Maybe that's a $1,000 consultation once I go back to my lab and figure it out. You guys have got to stop becoming emotionally attached to girls that you just start dating. Because you're using them for something else, filming them for something else. You don't even know these girls. I don't know how you can get to, I don't know how you can fall in love with a girl in four dates. Um, it just, I just don't see it. I don't know how. That, and by the time I was your age, I was like, fuck that, I gotta, I gotta eat. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta sleep. Um, all this shit that you've gone through and you, you there's something else driving you to get these girls that has nothing to do with love or whether you actually like them. It's conquering, it's trophy, it's making up for the past, and it's not good. Not good. Because every time, then you're like, yeah. I know. So, fuck them. Don't, don't worry about them, man. Just, just Wait until you actually like one of them. I mean, have you ever stopped that? Forget what they look like. Forget your hormones, which I know is very hard at your age. Have you ever stopped to say, I'm, I'm enjoying myself? You'd be amazed how few times. And I've went on hundreds of dates. And um, very few of them are memorable because I don't remember the enjoyable ones. And we're talking maybe a dozen. Maybe. Maybe. Um, most of them were painful. Pulling teeth. <laughs> Like looking at my watch, like God, I wasted a, a night. I could have gotten a shift in. I could have done some studying. I mean, there was an opportunity cost. Um, <clears throat> I remember those that also went spectacularly really bad. <laughs> um, but maybe, maybe you'll redeem yourself here. Uh, still get attracted to the girls. Would want anything to talk about. I didn't care about the girls themselves. Well, there we go. But rather about the fact that I was not able to hold the relationship. Yeah, so it's control. For me, every relationship was like a goal box that had to be ticked. Yeah, okay. That's good for Wharton. That's good for a career in finance. That's not good for dating. When they dumped me, I felt as if I had failed. Dude, you weren't even dating boyfriend, girlfriend. I don't know how they dumped you. Realized that most things in my life were actually like that and I never actually enjoyed anything I did. Everything I did was to tick boxes and achieve goals. I didn't enjoy the process or the goal itself, just being able to say I did. Realized I was always moved from one extreme goal to another and would fully commit myself to it and isolate myself completely and put myself through hardship to achieve the impossible. Good skill to have for some things. Outstanding skill to have for some things. Career like uh, education. You're working out. Perfect for those. 
Example, I enjoy going to France, not for actually being there, but saying I went there and when I'm there, I would visit France and all of its monuments, but wouldn't enjoy seeing the monument. I would instead enjoy the process of seeing every monument and taking it off the box. Since I kind of achieved my goal of having girls that decided to work more on self-improvement and other areas, I started reading a lot, meditating, writing diaries, going back to the gym, having routine, cold showers, etc. I don't do that cold shower stuff. After talking with my sister that knows me well, and I see me evolving and improving myself, and I mentioned how a girl I saw for three dates broke up with me and how it hurt me. I don't know how it hurts you, do. If a checkbox, hurt, checkbox hurts you, I just... She told me that my problem was not the girl. She's right. She said that I have been doing all these self-improvements, not for myself, but to get validation from others because I am not comfortable with myself. She's also right there. Although I do believe you may have accidentally fallen upon self-improvement for ulterior motives, but you will find out that self-improvement is a very noble, if not oftentimes the only goal a man will have for a lot of his life. I found that to be really interesting and probably true. No, no, not probably true. It is true. I explained why I didn't care about the girl herself, but since my validation was tied to her, she dumped me because it hurt. Because I lost my validation, it consumed me because I would spend so much time checking every text message I sent. Ah, oh, fucking Christ, goddamn saps. Sent and the responses and planning what I would say before sleeping, etc., etc. So now, Aaron, what do I need to improve on my journey? I acted on a lot of external factors, but how can I fix the internal ones? Do you think that I actually do have some self-validation problems? Oh, no, I don't think you do. You do. How can I go about solving that? Are there any other problems you can see in me? How can I just be happy? Dude, if you answer that question, how can I just be happy, you can write a book and be a multi-billionaire. I mean, you truly figure it out. I don't think happiness is attainable. Contentment is, but not happiness. Uh, <clears throat> your, your problem is perfectly described by your sister. You didn't need to even pay me. You just had to believe your sister. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it harkens back there, but... Its origins are there. Um, you want to prove everything to everybody. And you have. You have. Uh, that doesn't mean this was wasted. Uh, like this vengeance and getting back at people. That, that serves a, a lot of good in the world. And it has drastically improved you as a young man. <clears throat> but if you're doing it for vengeance... And to prove it to other people, well, there's not you doing it for you. And you've never asked yourself, as you said before, what do you want out of life? What do you want to do? Which is a question that should be answered when you're older. You can, you can ask the question now and try to figure out what you want, because sometimes the answer is not always there. It took me decades to figure out I like motorcycle riding. It took me decades to figure out I like golf. Um... But the reason I say that that's a question to be answered when you're older is in part because it's going to take decades to figure out what you want in life. And what you want in life is irrelevant until you can support yourself. So we're talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs here. I find it cute and fanciful how the millennial generation, and please don't become like them, thought they put what they wanted first in life above all else, including reality, finances. I mean, there's an article about some broad... Um, who is suing Great Lakes loan something or other because her loans didn't get forgiven. And it's like, why did you go into hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt? Because uh, okay. she wanted to. Well, I wanted to. Well, forget the mathematical reality. Forget the financial reality. Uh, so, however you got to this point of putting accomplishment and achievement and excellence and checking off the tick mark box and doing all that, that is a good point to be at because it is going to guarantee you a lot of success down the road and make your life a lot easier, okay? Um, it will not answer what do you want out of life, but that is not the question to be asking right now as a young man in college who's got to make his way in. What you got to do is, what does life want me to do? And you've, you've responded in a certain sense. You have answered that question. People picked on you. You were bullied. Girls didn't want to go out with you. What did you do? You deliver what society wanted. You got ripped. You got jacked. You worked hard. You're going to school. You're going to make money. You're doing exactly what society wants. Not in a cheap way, but in a very productive way. You've answered to what society wanted. And that's how you get society to pay you. And society has paid you. You got accepted to a very good school. And now girls are throwing themselves at you. You are getting rewarded for your work. This will then allow translate into making money. 
once you make enough money, then you will have the luxury of starting to ask yourself, what do you want out of life? Now you can start asking yourself this question, what's gonna make you happy, what do you want out of life now? Because it's gonna take some time to figure out, but do put the time, effort, and money into figuring that out. Uh, and, but don't expect it to happen today or tomorrow. But now that you're gonna to wanna to come to the point, what do you want? And now's about a good time to ask. You're at this crossroads, you realize you're not happy, you're obsessed about women. Uh, I would forget, I mean, go have sex and date and have fun, but, but this would be a good exercise, a good hurdle, initial hurdle to jump. See if you can just go out with a girl and not get obsessed about whether she texts you back or not. Try to really find out if you like the girl or hang out with her. Not a thing. They're not things. They're not things. Okay? They're human beings. And I bet you, nine out of ten times when you find out what they are for a human being, you'll be like, fuck this shit. I'm going to go play video games and jerk off the porn. <laughs> but it'll free you from that. And then you figure out what, what do you want. Do you want family? Do you want this? Do you want that? If you want family, you better find a, a quality wife type of guy. Do you want to go adventure or do you want to hike? Do you want to, whatever it is you want to do. Again, that question will be answered over time. But start asking these questions now. But you, have, you now need to move beyond proving it to other people. You're already on that track. You got that covered. Stay in physical shape. Have a successful career. You've scratched that itch. Don't worry. It's done. Everything's done in the past. You won. Going forward, though, proving those fuckers wrong in the third grade is not going to make you happy. You have a certain amount of life left. You got about 60 years of life left. What do you want to do during that 60 years that's going to make you happy? And that's a hard question to answer. And sometimes it's impossible to answer. It's a moving target as well. Your taste will change. What will make you happy will definitely change over time. But the first hurdle is to get over this chick shit. I'm done with that shit. I don't do, I don't do that here no more. Yeah, how do I get the girls? How do I get love with the girls? I, that, that, but, mm -mm, mm -mm. Answers are in PUA. Answers are red pill, but I think what you need to do is look beyond the girls as a thing and look at them for who they are. And you're going to see they're not that pretty. You're going to see they're not that smart. They're not that pretty. Although if you're dating girls from Warren, they might be that smart, actually. So maybe maybe keep your eye, keep keep a line out for them. But that's it, dude. You, you need to find out what do you actually want to do, not the check boxes. All right. Questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. Read all the links down below. All my books are really fucking awesome for all you young boys and girls out there. And we'll see you all later. Toodles.